Hello, my name is Bradley Butler, and I am the executive director and curator at Main Street Arts in Clifton Springs, New York. Uh, and uh, today I am joined by the artists included in our current exhibition, which is called Storm. Uh, and if you're tuning in, then you are tuning in to an artist talk, a group discussion, uh, and uh, we're, we're glad you joined us. Um, so before I get into talking about the show, I'm just gonna share some images with you all so you can see. Um, and all right, and uh, so Storm is a group invitational exhibition highlighting the work of nine artists working in painting, drawing, collage, ceramics, digital, digital works, fiber works. Uh, and this collection of artwork is a contemplation on violent disturbances of the atmosphere and the fascination we have with nature's awe-inspiring power. Uh, and so the nine artists that you'll get to hear from shortly are Faith Ann Flesher, Ed Green, Angela Guest, Ann McCoon, Joseph Palladino, Regina Quinn, Shu Tu, Joe Zalkowski, and Stefan Zoller. Um, this exhibition is made possible in part by the Rochester Area Community Foundation and the New York State Council on the Arts with uh, the support of the Office of the Governor and the New York State Legislature. And uh, this exhibition runs through Wednesday, April 19th, and we are open uh, Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 to 3 and Thursday through Saturday from 11 to 6. And uh, so uh, if you have not had the chance to come in and see the show for yourself, uh, what you just saw gives you a little bit of a flavor of the exhibition. And um, I'm gonna bring everyone back here. And um, so now I'd just like everyone to uh, go through and, and just briefly you know, say who you are and um, uh, tell us a little bit about um, you know, your, your practice as it relates to things in the show here. And I think we'll go uh, alphabetically. So uh, Faith Ann, that means you're lucky uh, contestant number one. Oh, terrific. Um, <laughs> awkwardly, if you look at the name underneath, I'm using my alias because I realized I didn't switch from my school account. So Faith Ann Carapella is the same person as Faith Ann Flesher. Um, I'm currently sitting right in the middle of the woods. Um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. I have been a teacher for 47 years in the Syracuse area. Um, I teach drawing and painting. I've taught at every level. Um, teaching really informs the way I work. I've always been a teacher, but also an artist. I, I really believe that you can't teach without doing what you're teaching. So I teach drawing and I draw every single day. Um, I just recently moved into, about five years ago, I moved into the middle of the woods on the top of a hill. And so much of my work is informed by the crazy weather that I have. Um, I have a, an interesting relationship to it. I think that it's, um, it's important to watch it moving and growing and destroying. And I think everything just kind of overlaps and works together. Um, I Living in the woods has changed the way I make art. I used to be very realistic. And just living in the midst of this, it's made me look at um, storm weather in different ways and look at nature in different ways. Great. Well, thank you, Faith Ann. And uh, we'll get even uh, further into that, um, the inspiration for that, into the work uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, and uh, Ed, you are next. Yep. I'm. Um been making pottery since oh probably 1980 I took it in high school and I just uh had it as a hobby for all these years and finally when uh COVID hit I lost my job so that's when I actually really started pushing myself to carry on full-time with it and I, I'm really enjoying myself and I was it was not a mistake to leave my job <laughs> so we're doing good but I, I mostly sto throw stoneware and uh, there's a lot of airbrushing that goes on in my work and hand painting. 
and I'm just starting to dabble a little bit with porcelains. So that's that's probably where I'll be moving next is the porcelains. Great. All right. Well, thank you, Ed. Uh, Angela. Hi. So I'm an artist. I'm originally from Texas and then I moved to Chicago and now I'm in Buffalo, New York. Um, I also teach, but I'm only on my second year. So I'm teaching high schoolers studio art. So a big range from fabric, drawing, painting, whatever I have, I can teach them. So I'm versatile in that way, but I primarily like to work with fabric. Um, I'm doing all that felt paracord thread kind of stuff right now. And I've been stitching since I got out of college for a little while. And I just like working in fabric. I feel connected to it. Like fabric's all around us. It's on our clothing. It's so a part of life. I think working in fabric has been very fulfilling for me. I miss drawing and painting a lot, um, how immediate it can be, but fabric, the long process also calms me down, makes me more thoughtful, I think, meditative, um, things like that, yeah. Great, well, thank you very much. And uh, fun fact, Angela was also an artist in residence at Main Street Arts in 2018, so. Um, thank you for mentioning that for me. I told myself, like, say that, but I totally forgot. <laughs> uh, it left a fun thing for me to say, so thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Anne? Hi, I'm Anne McCune. Um, I'm a painter. Um, I've been painting since I, well, maybe 30, 35 years. Um, started in watercolor, and I won't say I've ended in encaustic wax, but I'm certainly knee deep in wax at the moment and loving it. Um, and I think I've traveled that kind of artistic journey because I've always searched for texture, to add texture to whatever it is I'm painting. Um, and so once I found encaustic wax, um, I felt cliche as it, though it may sound that I'd really found my place, um, that I'd kind of come home. Um, I love it. It um, the texture really yeah. speaks to me. Um, constantly inspired by nature, in awe of nature, uh, the lines, the shapes, the movement, the colors, everything. Of, you know, it, you look out your window, you step outdoors. Every time you do that, there's something new. Um, so that basically is my my inspiration for, for painting. Um, not so much, the other thing with wax, I felt like um, it enabled me to be a little bit more abstract or almost forced me to be a little bit more abstract, um, which I wanted to be, but I found it more challenging with watercolor or acrylic or things like that. So um, that was the other draw for me, the texture and the abstraction, so. That's kind of been my artistic journey. Is there something after wax? Mm, don't know. <laughs> There's so much you can do with wax that um, maybe I'll just keep playing with that for a while. So. Great. Well, thank you. And uh, a successful uh, encaustic workshop here at Main Street Arts with Anne this past Saturday. And thank I can you. definitely see, you know, from that workshop, I can see how... Um, you know, abstraction is a, uh, it can be your friend and uh, something to embrace with, with that process for sure. Really exciting. So great. Uh, and let's see, Joey next. Hi, I'm uh, Joseph Palladino. I am a collage artist and photographer. Um, I started doing collage kind of as a way to uh, focus on something else other than photography when I was starting to get burned out. But as a result, pretty much every collage I make tends to resemble a photograph, um, either of a landscape uh, or something similar. Uh, maybe not completely realistic, but uh, still, still resembling that medium that I first fell in love with. Great. Well, thank you. And um, the, our, our um, after school art experience kids, um, 
they've been making work based on a lot of your work and uh and joey the um the kids when they looked at yours i had them guess like what medium is this because you know they know what collage is but you know they they all said it was a photograph so it was a nice uh nice moment to educate them. that that's that's awesome that's what i like to go for i i like the cuts to be so fine that you can't tell the difference yeah and it tested their their skills their cutting skills for sure because they tried to uh emulate your <laughs> your precision so <laughs> perfect i love it uh regina yes uh regina quinn and uh, i too am knee deep in encaustic just like Anne. <laughs> Um, I've been, I live in the Northern Catskills, uh, kind of in the woods, like Faith Ann, <laughs> uh, which is a, a great source of inspiration for me as well. Um, I do like it. Uh, I think the texture is something that drew me to encaustic, but I think it was really the, uh, sense of light, um, because the you build uh you can build so many layers of wax uh the light penetrates uh the you know the translucent areas and it reflects back in a way that almost feels like the work uh is backlit or lit from within mm -hmm. and uh so i've been working with encaustic for 12 years and I still like feel like such giddy delight um, every time that uh, that sense that glow happens. So that's a that's a big piece of my work. Um, I tend to uh, paint, so it's it's certainly inspired by the landscape, but I don't paint a, a particular place. It's it's all the observations and I think like the that sense when something is shifting, something is unsettled. Um, and I'll talk uh more about that in the next uh, section. But most of my work is kind of at the edges of the day, or uh, I I think all the titles of the pieces I have in the show are like before or uh after or approaching or that kind of thing so i think that i realized as i listed the titles that that, that really is kind of a theme of my work so. great well thank you very much and i mean we could have a whole discussion on um titles there's some great titles in in this show so <laughs> um <laughs> uh let's see uh uh shoe we're at shoe two Hi, hi, my name is Xu Tu. I'm an artist living in Upper Manhattan, New York. Uh, so recently my art is my way to discover, document faces of my life. Also a constant reminder of um, how beautiful and ordinary truth can be. Um, so in the last eight months or so, I have been creating art digitally. The mobility of this process really helped me to create art that capture the very moment. Um, which is reflecting uh, on the pieces I have in the exhibition. Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Joe Z. Hi, guys. How are you? Um, so the work that I selected to submit to the show is part of this pinhole photography series I called Pinholing Through a Pandemic. And uh, I've been going out at least two or three times a month uh, during the pandemic, but I've been shooting pinhole photography since around... 2000, 2002, and uh, I, I'm photographing daily. It's, um, it's not the individual photograph that interests me, it's the collection over a lifetime that I'm really curious about. And um, it was really exciting to have so like several eight pieces in the show. And um, during the pandemic, my titles have gotten really long, but uh, text and image has really been important to me as of late. So I, I, I hope you guys have been enjoying them. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much. And uh, uh, Stefan. Hi. Uh, so I'm Stefan. I'm a, a Rochester-based um, painter. I usually call myself a painter, visual artist. Um, I'm also a teacher. I teach uh, uh, college and university uh, drawing and, and painting. Uh, the paintings I make are 
uh, generally abstract, uh, very, very process based. Um, and I pull a great deal of inspiration from memory work, geology, and, and a lot from uh, the landscape of Western New York. Um, but probably throughout all of my time as a painter, the, the uh, continuing force is the material itself. So um, I think I find myself in an endless pursuit um, with uh, the possibilities of what paint can do, specifically acrylic paint. Um, and it's a potential for, for layering and, and a lot of experimental uh, sort of processes. And, and there's a, a good range of that just in the, in the handful of pieces I have in the show. Great. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank, thank you all for, for sharing a little bit about yourselves. Um, and so uh, when we get into the next next portion of the talk here, um, I'd like to focus on, you know, the theme of this exhibition, which is storm. And um, this, the idea for the show kind of came um, as like, I, I think I was hanging the uh, Small Works 2021, it's not this past one, but the one before that. And I was hanging uh, some kind of a stormy looking painting. And I kind of just said, you know, out loud, I was like, oh yeah, we should have a show called Storm. Wouldn't that be great? And I was kind of like joking. But then as I said it, I thought, wow, actually, I, I think that would be really great, you know? Um, and over time, I've tried to uh, make things as straightforward as possible uh, when presenting an exhibition. But then really when you, you know, delve into it, then there's so many different ways to go. You don't have to be um, so heady, you know, with like the title of an exhibition. Um, and I think that that's um, a really great entry for an artist to then submit to this show because then it's taken so many different ways. And I think that that's the thing um, that I find really interesting is not only was this exhibition um, had a great variety uh, within, you know, the kind of work that was submitted, you know, what things are made of, what things look like, there's a great contrast. Um, it does not look like just like a gloomy day, you know, the whole the whole way through. There's a few gloomy days on the wall, but um, you know, it's definitely not a one note exhibition. There's a there's quite a quite a few um, interpretations of of the theme. So I'd like to kind of just start out, and you know, there's no order for the way this has to go. Anyone can jump in first, but really just talk about um, the way that your work relates to um, you know this this idea because. Some of you take, um, you know, the the idea of a storm to not mean actual weather. You know, it means something else. Um, some things are very personal or seem very, you know, kind of um, like an inner kind of storm. Others are more societal. Um, so I just want to kind of open it up and see, you know, where where we want to want to take it. But anyone uh, is welcome to um, to start first. Well, I'll start. <laughs> I'll just say, I mean, just as an opener, I don't know how everybody else felt, but I mean, to be given storm, it was like, here you are, here's a gift. <laughs> you know, as an artist, it was, um, like you say, it can be interpreted in so many ways. Um, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where a storm is a storm <laughs> it is weather maybe along the way it might have been something different but um at the moment i took it for what it was um and all of the pieces that i have in there um so so that to me um is a good opener there you know <laughs> sort of um it's a gift to me i'm sure it was to others too especially living in the woods faith ann and regina mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything is changing constantly yeah by the hour mm -hmm. and I've let my woods go very natural so my entire surrounding looks like a storm all the time but I find beauty in that mm -hmm. it's the interest it's constantly changing it's evolving when the storm happens and destruction happens there's something to be born from it so it's just a, it's a process of nature moving through what nature does. Mm -hmm. And I'm just there to record it or feel it. Um, I watch very carefully and I start by observing. And then somehow it just, whatever is happening out there, it just evolves within me as well. 
Um, sometimes I'll just think that things are getting too precious and I'll tear them up and put them back together again the way nature does. It's fun to watch people when I take a six foot drawing and just start tearing it up. <laughs> they have nervous breakdowns about it. Oh my God, you can't do that. <laughs> but I can, and I do. I kind of connect with what you just said, Faith, where like, um, like I usually do art that's like the clouds, like just clouds, no lightning. Um, and I started doing that because, you know, I think I'm a young person and like, but I get anxious about death and so taking it there, but like looking at life and looking at like the clouds changing and all the time, like everything's changing, everything's supposed to change. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, and just like thinking about that, thinking how clouds form and then they d destroy themselves and they disappear and then they reform somewhere else into another beautiful thing. Like that just makes me happy when I think of it that way. And yeah, that's my art has calmed me down in that way. Made me less anxious about the inevitable, I guess. I really like the anticipation of waiting for the storm when mm. you see it coming and you just, mm -hmm. you, you don't know how it's going to turn out, what's going to happen. And uh, mm. I really like painting grayscale. So this, this was a great opportunity for me to combine my, my hills and mountains along with a, with a lightning scene in the, in the skies. And um, if you've ever seen, if you've ever been into Finger Lakes and watch, you can be up on one of the hills and watch a storm roll across one of the lakes from a distance. It's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just one of those people that's always looking up into the sky, see what's, mm -hmm. see what's coming next. When I, when I approach this one, I, the current series is dealing a lot with the chaos that we've been going through with the pandemic. And even though nobody said it stopped yet, I still think it's going. I'm teaching too, and I have a couple students that just caught it. <laughs> um, but I also, during photographic process, I go out into the storm because the variables and the weather conditions make the interesting photographs. The one that was on the card where I was in a snowstorm, I, it was like really difficult to get to that location. And I actually fell down at one point and had a hard time getting up like a turtle on its back because I had two cameras and two tripods. And uh, I was just like, kept going deeper into the snow. And there's been the previous show that uh, was at Main Street Art. I had a snow, I had a, went a summer storm and I almost got hit by lightning. And I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a pretty bad storm coming at me, but it made a beautiful photograph. And I never know if I get anything until, you know, weeks or months after processing, sometimes even years, and then uh, going through and scanning the whole process. Um, so it's, it's a visceral immediacy for me, but then the image is kind of like the historical record of what I experienced. And what I'm looking at, because I've been doing these profiles to hide the remote control um, and also to have this profile, um, I don't actually see the landscape that I'm photographing. I'm looking at something else, which is quite interesting too. I think um, that sense of tumult and um, I, so I turned 65 uh, recently, and I think up until maybe the last decade, so I don't know if it's getting older or just the world as it exists now, um, I think I, I felt more optimistic about the future. And that uh, and I, I used to teach, I, I taught elementary, I used to be a principal, high school principal, <laughs> that was tough. But um, I think being in education, um, you're, you're always like thinking about the future. And I, I felt like I was preparing students for uh, a better future for themselves, but like also a better future for the planet and that kind of thing. And I feel like that sense is really challenged. But um, so I think for me, a storm 
like I feel like we're in the midst of storms we we don't even really have perspective on so kind of like Joe like you know it's like what we're seeing and what we're experiencing is kind of a gap but I think um when I'm out in the natural world and things are tumultuous and shifting or they've just you know kind of gotten past it you know a storm there's a sense of hope, a sense of balance, a sense of possibility. And I, I try to express that in my work. So I don't, I don't want to like capture a beautiful scene. Um, I want to like convey the experience of hope in the in the as you're you know, approaching darkness or optimism as, you know, things are, are kind of falling apart. <laughs> so okay, then I, I loved your, uh, you know, tearing up a, a, a drawing. It's the same thing with painting, you know, like you get to a certain point and scratch into and scratch into and then like eventually you come through it. And uh, so I think that my work externally is stormy but it's more of an internal uh and kind of social perspective that i i was aiming for there's always a clean feeling after the storm i feel like let's move on and yeah. we're safe it, the worst didn't it's happen fun. yeah um, right right yeah. right yeah yeah and i think that um you know, there's there's something interesting to think about. It's you know, it's a storm is only really exciting to witness when you're not in the middle of it. You know, or if it's it's not uh, one that's like threatening in some really real way. Um, there's something that's really interesting about the dichotomy of like, you know, um, fleeing from a storm and then also just being a witness to it from a safe vantage point and being in awe of it. And I think yeah. that um, there's you know, I think there's uh, um, similarities in, in other ways I think about a storm other than the weather as well. Um, but there's, there is something that I think that, that I would say most people, um, you know, can just sit and watch a storm. There's really something interesting about that. I think one of my pieces is called impending and, um, our house faces north. And so when my kids were young and there was a storm coming, we're about five miles from the lake, I think. So we could see the storm coming over the treetops and we would all go onto the front porch with a popsicle. Not sure why the popsicle, but we did. <laughs> and uh, we just sat on the, on the front porch covered and um, just watched this thing and you could literally watch it move from west to east and um, just the changes, not just the changes in the sky, but the light that it shed on the top of the trees and that, that starkness that um, comes with every storm, everything's accentuated and uh, yeah. So um, I, I, think, I think that's what, um, you were talking about that it's just that it's just impending and you wait for it to pass but it's that feeling like Regina said of there being life afterwards <laughs> and maybe even hope afterwards also. I've started within the last year um, I've started taking advantage of the storms moving in, the weather taking over. And I will take sheet, big sheets of paper and I'll put powdered um, watercolor or pigment, mm. just drop it on and then put it out on the deck and let the, wet, let, let the winds hit it and let the trees crash into it and let the squirrels run, the damn squirrels, <laughs> let the damn squirrels run over it. Um, <laughs> And then I start from that. Sometimes I'll take an actual drawing that I've been working on. Um, I've been working in silver point and I found out that there's this great silver pigment that's a powder and I'll drop the silver pigment on it and I'll throw it out into the, um, into the deck and I'll see what nature does to it. And then I'll go back in and I'll work into it again. So I never quite know what's happening with it until it happens until 
something emerges it, it tries to tell tries to tell me something um so it's that it's that really lovely surprise that shock that i think you were all talking about you don't quite know what's happening you don't it's coming at you and you're part of it but you're not it's it's a surprise it's just it's shocking it's it's discovery yeah i would i would uh i love the description of that process in terms of leaving things out uh to uh to the elements and kind of setting up that scenario right um i, um, I think, it's so exciting yeah yeah it's like a christmas present or, or <laughs> opening, opening up a kiln having not you know not knowing what mm -hmm. the, the heat will do yeah. um and 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 I think for me when I saw the description of uh, of the show um, and certainly like that that you know that that process resounds with me because a lot of my work is uh, very experimental and and process based and and it's and it takes so much time it takes months and and often years for my work uh, to sort of build up really slowly and I think the contrast of uh, that that sort of length of time which i link to more like geologic processes which is very often very slow like you know uh, river water creating uh deep canyons or glaciers carving out the landscape and then you have that um opposite of of these storms or or you know mudslides or volcanic eruptions that can reshape things so quickly mm -hmm. um so like my my work is is very much like dealing with those extremes and kind of setting up that opportunity for chance um, in terms of like how this particular paint on this particular day with a very particular viscosity and the humidity in the air will react to you know what's what's been built up underneath um, and a lot of the times that they are failures and you just keep going, right? Like for me, I just keep layering on and on, and then sometimes they're spectacular. Um, so that, I think that those extremes, um, I really liked. In addition to, I think Storm, I immediately thought of, you know, being a painter, uh, sort of like English and German romanticism, like, you know, Turner or uh, John Martin um, or Caspar David Friedrich. Like I'm a big fan of that, you know, those notions of the sublime and the, the might of nature and that 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 destructive power, but also for uh, rebirth and um, you know opportunity, I guess. Um, so I thought that I thought the show was great, uh, great in terms of a description to uh, latch on to. Yeah. The yeah. the uh -huh. waiting or the you know giving something time sounds a bit like my process to an extent. I'm always so hesitant to finish a collage because what if there's another piece that would be a better fit? So things end up sitting on my desk for a while and sometimes another something, another cut will get piled on top of something else and I'll realize that that's better. And, you know, sometimes just, sometimes things sit there for a while until I'm confident enough that those two pieces go together and then I can complete it. Yeah, I love the fact that everyone talked about a lot of about letting kind of your work take the leads. Um, something that I share similarly that my art actually leads me to a lot of clarity. So this series actually was incredibly personal. I created a series about seven months ago. Um, it was taking place at a time of like a drastic change in life where I had to like navigate a lot of painful experiences. So through my eyes, the sky was appeared to be full of rage and turbulence. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really interesting that, you know, through your eyes, through your own interpretation, you know, things kind of evolve and change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, a lot of you, um, you know, obviously we, we just talked about, you know, the, the connection to storm, but you also, a lot of you talked about process and material too. Um, and I think that that's a really interesting connection um, to, to think about because, you know, like the, the act of, um, of making can often feel like that as well. Um, 
so I guess as we kind of get closer to, um, you know, coming to the close of the, the talk, how, you know, does anyone have anything they want to share more about um, process uh, or material? I thought it was really interesting um, that we had, you know, two encaustic painters, um, you know, fi fiber work, ceramics, digital work. Um, it's really interesting to see uh, the combination. And also, you know, similar to what Joey, Joey Palladino, what you were saying uh, about, you know, your, um, you, you want things that you'd make, your collages that you make to read as straight photographs. Um, it's interesting because like with Shu Tu's work, um, you know, she's using, uh, you know, digital, uh, the, the digital pieces, but they, they come across definitely as um, a watercolor painting or uh, traditional media. And that's similar to what I said about Joey's work with the, um, the after school kids. You know, I had them guess what is this made of, and and none of them obviously guessed um, digital work. So it was really um, interesting to see. Mm -hmm. So, I really like the idea of when um, the, a lot of the excitement for doing the pottery for me is it doesn't come out the way you you put it in that kiln, <laughs> and uh, if you happen to miss a brush stroke or whatever, it'll show up, and you just never know. If you're going to get all your pieces come out good or nothing i had uh i did a raccoon firing two days ago there was four pieces and i had one come out mm -hmm. so try try again but uh, i think that's a lot of excitement for me and that that's kind of another stormy type of mm -hmm. thing for me i just you just the, the anticipation i guess mm -hmm. It's a little bit like that with the um, the torch that you use for um, encaustics. You can use the torch just to fuse your wax, but you can also use it to manipulate your paint, your wax paint. So that's always exciting because you're never quite sure what it's going to do. <laughs> you're not really in charge of that. Right. Um, it takes a lot of um, time to perfect it so that you are in charge, but it's those happy little accidents that can happen sometimes with that heat process. So mm -hmm. that's kind of similar type of thing to opening that door on the kiln. Yeah. I think in, in so many different art forms, so don't you think that, um, you know, with watercolor, um, you've got those beautiful um, translucent, transparent glazes that happen and, also, and I'm sure putting your paper out on the deck is <laughs> <it's> quite a surprise when you find it in the morning. <laughs> so, it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I think there's a lot of accidental beauty in a lot of the stuff that we do. Did you choose specifically Blair, to do different media to do the fabric and the uh, yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's a, a good question. Um, you know, it, when when you ask people to submit for a show, you're at the whim of the people that are submitting and then also, you know, what they end up submitting. And, um, you know, the nine of you um, presented just a really nice cross-section of, of all the variety of things that were submitted, but just such, um, I don't know, just it, it felt like a really compelling show with a, a lot of, contrast. Um, and my thing that I like to do um, as a curator is a challenge to myself is to bring things together that maybe don't necessarily make sense, or you think maybe it's not possible to make this look like a cohesive show, and then to then, you know, to, to make it look as cohesive as I possibly can. Um, and I think that's probably something I've mentioned on more than one of these uh, online talks that we do, but um, but it's a, a, a really interesting challenge and it keeps things interesting for me. Um, but I think more than anything, I was just delighted by, um, you know, what, what you all presented to us. Um, and, uh, you know, th this kind of exhibition is something that we're continuing to do, uh, where people submit, you know, regional artists submit around some kind of a theme. Uh, there's no, no fee, it's not a juried show but it's an invitational, you know, but we're really just inviting people based on what we've seen. So uh, really looking forward to seeing how this process evolves. Um, and hopefully, you know, the next show we have coming up um, with a deadline of June 10th for all you artists out there, 
Um, it's called Inspired by Nature. So very similar um, kind of theme, you know, having to do with, with the natural world. Um, so we look forward to seeing how that comes out too. So good. So yeah. Um, uh, so I think um, unless we have any last minute uh, burning statements that anyone wanted to make, <laughs> Um, I think uh, it's a good good point to um, to bring to a close. And um, I just want to remind everyone um, watching that uh, the exhibition runs through Wednesday, April 19th. Um, and if you are able to come see the show in person, uh, definitely worth your while. Um, and if not, you can see images um, of the show on our website, along with a virtual walkthrough. Unfortunately, there's, um, you know, you'll see this face um, for part of it. So uh, <laughs> you'll definitely hear this voice. So, um, but anyway, you'll be able to see that, um, you know, walking through the show and, and learning more about these artists, uh, even more than, than what you heard tonight. Um, so definitely you can go to MainStreetArtsCS.org, uh, navigate to the Storm exhibition page, and you can find links to those, uh, those things. Um, so thank you to the nine of you for joining us tonight. And, um, and for everyone out there, hope you can get in to see the show. It's nice to meet thank you. That was really nice to meet you again. <laughs> nice to see everybody again. Bradley, thank you for putting together a beautiful show, as always. Yeah, that's right. yeah. We're all, you, we're all, all, all of us here at Main Street Arts are, are happy uh, to, um, to, to do this, so.